everybody, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Sharon. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. For folks that don't know who you are, why don't you give us who you are, where you are, what you do? Okay, um, so I'm Sharon Sumner, Business Applications MVP. Uh, my passion is Power Apps, but I actually come from SharePoint, so I know of you from many years back. <laughs> There's a lot of us that are out there. We've kind of gone different directions, but yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I come from um, probably 2007 on SharePoint. So I've been doing SharePoint, I think we measure it in decades here. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, really come from that. But now um, as an MVP, I'm running the um, Cambridge Power Platform User Group over here in Cambridge in the UK. Excellent. Well, I always like to ask this for people that uh, were involved with SharePoint way back. To Do you feel like getting involved in 2007 that you were like a latecomer? into the SharePoint space? Like, do you, do you still think of yourself that way? Because that's about the era I started, I got involved. And it was, well, I mean, it was still 2003 was going on, but getting ready and Microsoft was was showcasing 2007. And so that that period, but I always feel, I still feel like I was a late bloomer in the SharePoint space. Um, yeah, I guess you're right, because kind of when we started in 2007, although I really think of 2007 as the first real version, right, you know, workflows, content types, yeah. all that kind of magic came in that version. So, um, and it kind of got to be a really exciting product rather than just something that may be interesting. But even then, back in 2007, you're right, there was still, you know, like the pros that have been in it, Todd Klein, etc., were already there for like a decade. <laughs> so, you know, you've got, you've, you've still had back then you still had like massively seasoned experts. So yeah, I do feel a bit like a newcomer, but it's been a fantastic journey, huh? And uh, you know, I, I've put it out there many times. I do love SharePoint, do love it. Some days I love it and hate it, but most days I love it. <laughs> well, and so what was your path into the uh, Power Platform? Um, and I guess it kind of, it was the, um, the evolution of SharePoint, right? So SharePoint workflows, you, you kind of had to evolve or die, right? right. So you, you either became hardcore and you carried on playing on-prem, you also to do that, um, or you get into the new toys. And the new toys were really exciting. And when I started looking at the Power Platform, um, you know, I, I think I watched some early um, Microsoft Learn stuff with Audrey Gordon and John Levesque, and those two people just made it sound so exciting. So off I went to play with it and, um, you know, never looked back. But essentially, you know, it's the workflow replacement. So my heart is in business process automation. And to do that and to do that well moving forward, Power Apps is the place to be, right? Yeah, that was one of those things, too. I remember when they announced what they were doing, this direction in a power platform. And at the MVP summit, I don't, I don't remember what year it was, but it was when it was still the way that they used to do the MVP summits, which is an, for those that aren't familiar, it's an annual event and all the MVPs would gather back when we used to gather uh, for events, <laughs> um, but on Microsoft campus and all the SharePoint people were together for like that full week and, and do deep dives in different areas of the product. And I remember sitting over, we were in, um, you know, so in like split between two rooms and this room was like jam packed and they made kind of the announcements of like the future of the automation and what was happening with InfoPath and where the direction Microsoft is going to go. But it was still, it was SharePoint people. I think that was the last year where we were kind of segregated, like all, you know, we were together for the entire week. I think it was the year after that, where at that summit, where like half the crowd was gone because they kind of opened up all the topics across the campus. And so there was a number of people that were going to Azure sessions and to the dynamic sessions, which is where a lot of the, you know, power platform type topics were being held. And, and so I actually didn't see people. I saw two people that had been there every year, old timers in the MVP world. I saw them at the airport as we were all leaving. Like I didn't see them at the <laughs> Um, you yeah, know, I've actually, I've never attended an in-person one. So kind of looking forward to that. That's on the bucket list. Uh, just got to stay an MVP for that long, basically. Um, but, you know, it's it's one of those things that um, 
So I've spent the last decade, I would say, growing the organization. So I'm also the CEO of my own Microsoft Gold Partner. And that takes up a lot of time. So it's only sort of in the last couple of years that I've been able to up the commitment to the community. It's always been there, right? So I've always been a, you know, involved in charities and charitable and, and giving back to communities. Now the tech community, I think, really took off with the advent. You know, we already had SharePoint, SharePoint Saturdays, right? But then came, come the Power Platform, we got into a whole bunch of new community members. The reach just got bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, and so I think it just got really fantastic and exciting at that point to be involved. And so that's really when I started kind of speaking more and starting up the user group because there was a, there was a bigger audience to talk to. I think in the early days, we were just kind of like a hardcore contingent of SharePoint people, right? <laughs> Always everybody at the same event. To be fair, SharePoint Saturday and a lot of that, that community was spun off off of the SQL Saturday, which is also a massive contingency that's out there. And so what's what's wonderful about this is that there, there are still, I mean, there's still SQL Saturday type things that are going on. There's a huge yeah. AI community. Of course, there you have the, the SharePoint Saturday and there's a lot of, like we rebranded, there's a lot that have rebranded. Like we we moved ours to our annual events to Fridays. And so we're like the Microsoft 365 Friday event um but i mean a lot of that community is still there and now plat you're, you're right power platform as a community movement is just exploded as well but there's just yeah. you know like i'm a member of all of those you know <laughs> keeps you busy huh <laughs> well there's just there's, so there's a lot that you could go in there do because the reality is that our day jobs uh, touch on all of those different areas so you don't have yeah. to go and yeah, i'm only looking at these areas yeah i guess and again uh you know heavily into the power up side of things but at the moment rpa has kind of got my attention yeah and i think you know as an organization we've got we've got a huge uh huge huge for us right we're, we're a smallish company compared to like our points um but we're um we're focused on the on the power platform and the and the business process automation but rpa i think has got a massive direction to go in i think the next couple of years it's going to again explode totally and i think again it comes from that kind of SharePoint workflow data into results and making, you know, people's lives easier. It's all about the productivity and the efficiency. And that's kind of what gives me the, the kick out of making those processes automated. So I kind of think RPA has got a, a good couple of years to come and, and an explosion of its own to happen as it gets more entrenched. So prior to the SharePoint space, I mean, were you still in the business process automation kind of, kind of space? What was, what was your background prior to that? Oh God. Um, let's go back a bit. Um, so before that, I was actually, um, I was in, dirty word, I was in search engine optimization before then. Uh, so we ran a um, company for about 20 years before that doing online marketing. Um, and we were kind of, we were there at the start of the internet. God, it makes me sound old. We were there at the start of the internet where, you know, uh, we had a hosting company and we had you know, a website with waving palm trees, you know, back when it was cool and, and difficult to do. <laughs> You, know I mean? you, had to, you, you can't, you have to go in, if it, you knew it was an important website when there was theme song that would automatically start playing and there's something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> so it was a, and that's kind of where we started out. And back then it was, a, again, it was still about automation. So we had a product called Broadcaster, which um, promoted you to all the search engines, you know. So it's, it's always been about doing a job uh, and automating that and kind of sitting under the hood. Uh, now with Casper 365, we're about uh, the automation of SharePoint sites and team sites and governance and all of that side of things. So there's a, a decent balance in the day job of things to be interested in around the Microsoft cloud that kind of then spurs my interest to go and like, oh, let's go and look at this topic and let's go and explore that with the community. Yeah. And that's the one thing I really like about about this community. I feel like um, when you look at tech communities, they can seem to be really competitive. It's just not the way in MVP land, right? Anybody that's got an MVP award, in my experience, is just such a decent human being. And that's kind of why you're awarded it, right? Um, because everybody is so giving and helpful and, and it's a fantastic thing to be a part of. Um, so I, I thoroughly enjoy kind of spending what time I can uh, in the community. I have to say that, I, I mean, yeah. historically, and there have been some, and I'll, I'll be kind, I'll say some difficult personalities in this space. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I think Microsoft has 
have uh, really gone in and uh, there are you know, like standards for participating as an MVP and mm -hmm. they've gone in and enforced those. And there's some really nice people who did said some stupid things, had, you know, some breakdowns emotionally and uh, just like frustrated at something and then acted in an inappropriate way and lost their MVP and rightfully so. And, but it's, so I'm, I'm glad to see Microsoft kind of setting those, the standards, the bar for that, because I agree that, the MVPs that I know, like you, you, you can't be an MVP and hold it in and, and hold all the knowledge. These are some of the most, you know, into being just super connectors from a, a yeah. social standpoint and sharing what we're, what we're learning. And it's not something like, Hey, look at me. While there are some people that are, that are like that, it's much more of a, Hey, I learned this thing. And rather than going and saving it to my files or, you know, like, like sharing it with the world. It's that's just part of the way that we think. No, I think you're spot on. I mean, it used to be in tech, it, you know, in the early days for me, everybody was kind of hoarding, you know, mine. Um, not like that anymore. Everybody wants to help everybody get to the next step. And I always say, you know, I don't consider from a business point of view, I don't think you can do anything truly inspirational while you encumber yourself with the thought of competition, right? There are lots of companies out there that need the help of lots of Microsoft partners. So if you if you bother yourself with what everybody else is doing, you're never going to truly innovate yourself. So I always feel like that's exactly the same in the community. Everybody wants to share the knowledge that we've learned to propel everybody a little bit faster because if I can propel you, you're going to go on and do something and you're going to feed it back to me. And we just all move together much faster. And um, what's the fun in exploring on your own, right? I mean, right. I can't remember the last time I went on a trip on my own and didn't kind of phone home and say, this is really cool. Everybody wants to share it. You take you take photos, you share, right? And that's what experiences are for for me. Well, so it, I think, it, I think the, it's a very the companies that I've worked for, I mean, I've always had friends that were worked for some of our direct competitors. And yeah. And I, I love having those conversations where we go in and we can talk about, I mean, look, human nature is that uh, it, it's great when there's a boogeyman where we all together can go attack that. But a lot of that with that boogeyman is our gaps, our, 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 you know, our opportunities for growth and development. It's something where, look, no platform, no technology is perfect. We, it, it, you go and look at Power Platform and there's probably a list of a hundred things that you can think of that you'd like to see it extended and expanded and built upon or improved upon. Yeah. And so that's that's kind of the boogeyman. That's the, the opportunity for us, even competitors to work together and say, hey, there's a business need that's out there. Here's our approach. And then bring competitors you know, uh, others within the community together to say, how would you approach this? How would you answer that? Validate your ideas for going and solving well, that customer need. I think the Microsoft terminology is totally spot on. It's that we're all partners, right? So if we all share the workload with the same goal, which is getting the end customer to their goal, you know, th there's no com competition there really, is right. that? I mean, okay, you might be selling exactly the same service as someone else, but whichever one of you gets that piece of work, somebody else will need that piece of work. You know, there's no need to all be, you know, massively competitively vying for the same piece of work. In my experience, looking, if you're if you're in those markets where it's taking off in the way that it is, look at the Power Platform. It, two years ago, nowhere near the amount of jobs that there are. I mean, it's ridiculously hard to recruit people because there are just more jobs than there are people that are in the panel platform, you know, so which I really like, actually, because it means you get to bring on juniors and you get to mentor and you get to actually bring people on and, and help them in their career. I the totally pie is just getting bigger. Yeah, I mean, the Sorry. pie is just getting bigger and we're going to need more help. We're going to need more people. And and then there's then you have little things like, I don't know, multi cloud. So the ability to work across multiple you know environments, multiple systems. Uh, and, and so that's, I mean, there's, there's going to be opportunities. There's always going to be integration, you know, interoperability, you know, needs uh, across these solutions. Um, and then, you know, then you also have, I think that there are also gaps in industries. There are some industries where there's been a lot of work, there's a lot of personnel, there's a lot of activity. So the maturity level of SharePoint and Teams and Power Platform are strong within those worlds, but other industries might be very weak. 
Yeah, and I guess, and that, and that's kind of one of those things, isn't it? So when you, the thing I like about being a gold partner is that it's not our first time. Yeah, we've seen a version of these problems before and it's the same thing. We can propel you there faster. The book that I'm writing, I've been writing for about a year, <laughs> it's called Getting to Value Faster and it's a fundamental belief, right? Because if we can get a client to value faster, whether that's from leveraging what we've done over here for the health sector and applying that to the finance sector, you know, all of those things, that should be our focus. That should be what we're trying to do. Um, organizations that we look to partner with where I can see that they're, you know, repeating the same model, customer in, customer, you know, it's not very inspiring. And kind of, I quite like being a small company in that way because we get to choose who our clients are and we get to choose who our partners are. And, you know, I've always had the ethos with my team that it's fun to come to work. So the moment we stop having fun, what are we doing, right? So for us, it's about taking on a piece of work that, that challenges us or we really feel like we can massively deliver a super benefit. Um, and I kind of got a little bit known for saying no, um, because if a customer comes to you with, a, with an ask and it, there's just no business value in it, I'm going to tell them, you know, and I, and I think that's important. I think more of us should be doing that. But anyway, I don't guess. <laughs> no, I, I like that. Uh, the idea, too, is that you know, we're so much of what we've been doing within the collaboration ecosystem has been trying to help companies stop doing like reinventing the wheel when they're trying to go and solve these business problems. And so that concept of, you know, that time to value so much of what automation is about. That's what, you know, the SharePoint community has been about is automating these things, doing these faster, learning from the community. So we're not repeating the mistakes Say no, this is how you go and do that. So that we don't, I mean, this is what a lot of the shift has been within the community. And there's a, I think there's a reason why so many former SharePoint people are over in the power platform world is because we've gone from being, you know, our focus being on keeping servers up and running, like <laughs> they're up and running now. Uh, you know, like we, we've moved past that where we can look at the next stage where we're talking about automation through provisioning, through creation of customized applications through the AI capabilities and other automation. There's, there's just so many different ways that you can extend, build onto that, core the baseline yeah. is improved we don't need to go back and, and resurface that we can focus now on how do we get there faster how do we deliver the the outcomes that will really change your business yeah and i think it's, it's interesting that you've hit actually on the reason why i started this business because i kept coming across sharepoint consultants who are out there and they're the lone man on site right so just one sharepoint consultant can do it all well they can, but that's not the bit they love, right? So you either loved search, heaven forbid, or, or metadata, or whatever it is that was your thing, taxonomy. Um, you know, you loved a particular element of SharePoint. For me, it was the automation side of things. And so I wanted to progress and play with the automation all of my time. And so what we did when we first started, this is some 11 years ago now, was we took a bunch of SharePoint consultants and deliberately had people that liked different bits and then offered that as a package rather than trying to you know square peg round hole um, a single consultant on site and I think um, the kind of shift away from kind of just having one person that you're going to rest everything on um, and like you say with the with the power platform the nice thing about that is actually we've democratized into the entire organization right with the whole citizen developers or excel demons or whatever it is you want to call them um, that are thoroughly engaged with the business just need a little bit of support from the tech you know it now means that there's a whole group of people in the business little little community of its own um that you can help to grow and you can help to nurture and that's far more powerful than having one guy sitting there doing it well, well you know you just you basically just have done from a technology standpoint so my favorite management book uh, well one of my favorite management books but I actually have multiple copies because i used to give one to every employee that i would hire uh, it's a it's a book by uh, Marcus Buckingham called First Break All the Rules. The whole the 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 net net of it is that you build teams and uh, and support people based on their strengths, not this yeah. idea that there's a uh, the well rounded employee that can do everything well. Like those those are rare. Those are unicorns out there in the field. Because there are those freaks of human nature that can do everything really well. All right, we, we don't see them very often. Um, but 
the you know does somebody that is really passionate they're just fantastic at one role of that or one area of technology then building a team around that so you have deep expertise in each of these areas and then leverage them as needed i think that's the secret to management and successful teams and longevity of employees as well they're happier within those roles and so that that just resonates I'll take that as a dick. Yeah. Christian Bunting's seal of approval. <laughs> yeah. So that really resonates with me. I think that's a smart way to go and build a technology team the same way. So the thing is, you do, you don't want to you don't want to go to work, right? So I I come in every day and we sit and we have fun as a team, right? And part of the passion that they have and they need to have is the continual learning and the desire to deliver something good to a client, yeah. right? And then on top of that, you need to have your own area of expertise, exactly as you're saying there. You need to have, you need to bring that passion to the table. And I love to argue with the team, you know, to, to tell me your opinion, you know, don't take my word for it. And I'm, I say it all the time. Yep. Don't do it my way. I don't know everything. I hired you because you're cleverer than me, right? Give it back. And I really enjoy that with the team that they, that they take part and, and that we do have that relationship where, you know, nobody sits on a high pedestal. I, just, I don't think that's the way anymore. I don't think that would be successful. You have to have the ability to push back, to share your opinion. If you don't, if you have that fear, then I, that's just an unhealthy organization. I've worked at companies where I have yelled at my 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 boss. I have you know, reported the CEO a couple of times. I've yelled at my CEOs and been able to, and then we're fine. We'll go out to lunch. It's like, it's not, it's not an emotional like that. It's a passion about, Hey, this is what actually needed. We're expressing ourselves and that side of it. Yes, I like, shouldn't yell as much. At, but, if you can't stand at a whiteboard and yell at me, then I right. don't believe you care about what you're doing. Just yeah. don't. Do you know I agree. I mean? We're uh, we're on the same page there. Yeah. Well, Sharon, really appreciate you taking the time to 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 talk and and uh, for folks that want to find out more about you, how can they get in touch? What are the best ways to reach you? Oh, wow. Uh, so I have a blog. Uh, it's called The Powerful Blog. Um, I've got a YouTube channel, also called Sharon Sumner. Um, you know, I'm on Twitter a lot and LinkedIn. A uh, fair few people connected to me there. So, uh, you know, come and find me. Do, do ask questions. And, you know, I, it's one of those communities, don't forget, where you're allowed to ask people. Um, if I'm busy, I would tell you that I'm busy, but I'll come back to you later. But by all means, get in touch and, um, you know, let's have a chat. Let's, let's have a virtual coffee and talk about what's, what's going on, what's exciting and what you're up to. That's another thing I say all the time about MVPs is like, look, you find an MVP, we're plugged in from a community wise. Like, don't let shyness be the reason why you don't reach out. Like, connect, like you find somebody you really like what they're saying, reach out to the worst that'll happen is they'll say, hey, I'm busy right now. I can't get back to you, but let's talk in the future. Like every one of us will respond back to you. Absolutely. I've never had an MVP say no. Never. Well, Sharon, hey, it was great connecting and we'll talk soon. You too. All right. Thanks for that. <laughs>